Everyone knows that being 40 years old or over means being over the hill. In other words, your prime years are behind you. Maybe you've come to this conclusion yourself. You have some nagging joint pain. You don't recover from hard workouts like you used to. You seem to gain body fat easier than ever and building any strength or muscle feels impossible. I guess you should just give it up, right? Wrong. Look, here's the truth that every good fitness trainer and coach knows about training people who are over 40. They have more life responsibilities. Look, you have a career, you pay rent or mortgage, and you have a family to care for. You also have had the time to accumulate injuries over the years. All of this poses new challenges, but it does not mean your body is all of a sudden not capable of incredible physical change. It simply means you need to change your strategy. How do I know this? Well, I've trained people just like you for over two decades. I'm also familiar with the data on strength, fat loss, and physical performance. And the truth is, you can get in some of the best shape of your life so long as you approach your training and lifestyle the right way. This is why we created MAPS 40 Plus. We understand how to program workouts to take into consideration life stressors that can affect hormone levels and recovery. We know what exercises and what kind of workout programming takes common joint pain into consideration. We know what gets the over 40 year old crowd into amazing shape. Math 40 Plus was designed to maximize recovery, muscle building, and fat loss. You will work with your body and not feel like you're battling against it. With MAPS 40 Plus, you will see and feel strength, performance, and muscle gains like never before. You'll also speed up your metabolism, making fat loss easier and more sustainable. This program isn't just a workout. It also includes lifestyle habits that will balance hormones and turn back the clock. By the way, I've personally been working out since I was a teenager, and now that I'm deep into my 40s, I also use the principles in this program, and I feel and look as good as I did in my 20s. Math 40 Plus is what your body needs to feel strong, healthy, and vibrant. By the way, MAPS 40 Plus also comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you can sign up, follow the program for a full month, and if it doesn't deliver, if it doesn't blow your mind, if you don't feel younger, stronger, and healthier, return it for a full refund. So there's nothing to wait for. Get started now. Click on the link to do this. All right, we're launching a brand new program. It's called MAPS 40 Plus. We actually wrote a program specifically for people over the age of 40. This is also the first workout program that includes lifestyle programming. So not just your workout, but lifestyle programming. And we also include dietary and supplement guidelines. And so that's what we're going to talk about in today's episode. Special considerations when you turn over 40 exercises, workouts, you know, what kinds of things you do in the morning in the evening to help bring back those youthful level of hormones. Now, because it's a brand new program and it's a brand new launch, it's going to be on sale. Okay. So if you are interested, you go to maps, 40 plus.com 40 is the number 40. So maps, the number 40, and then plus.com and use the code 40 launch. So four zero launch will get you $80 off and you'll get two eBooks that are included. One of them is the health babes guide to balancing hormones. And the other one is the four phase histamine reset plan. These are both incredible, incredible uh, books from Dr. Becky Campbell um, and her team. Um, by the way, this sale and this offer ends Sunday, December 24th. So if you're interested in the $80 off and the free eBooks, you got to get this program before the 24th. Today's giveaway is the super bundle. That's a lot of free programs. Here's how you can win it. Leave a comment below this video in the first 24 hours that we drop it. Subscribe to this channel and turn on notifications. If you win, we'll let you know in the comments section. They call turning 40 over the hill. I guess that's because after you turn 40, everything goes downhill. Uh, you're not as strong. You gain body fat a lot easier. It's harder to build muscle. You just don't feel the same. Now, when I was younger, I used to scoff at that. That's not true. I think it's just because you're not living the way you used to. But then I turned 40 and I did notice some differences myself. So in today's episode, we're going to talk about the 
unique challenges that are posed to people who turn 40, why they may be in those challenges, why it's harder to build muscle, why they find joint pain more common, hormone changes. Should they work out like everyone else? That's what we're going to talk about in today's episode. So this uh, this particular topic is funny because um, I, you know I've been training people for a long time. I started training people as a, as a as a kid, and I would always hear people clients say to me, "You just wait. You yeah. just wait till you get older. Just wait and see. You'll see what I'm talking it's about. Catch up." Uh, now to be, to be, you know, honest, a lot of that had to do with their lifestyle. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, that's for sure. There's definitely, well, I don't think I need to make the argument, but your, your lifestyle, um, how you exercise, sleep, eat, I mean, there's a massive impact on how you feel your performance, body fat, <clears throat> muscle, that whole thing. But age also, uh, plays a role for sure. When all those things are, are equal and I experienced this myself, I, Right around, I would say, as I got to like 37, 38, I did start noticing a few things. And so this became a lot more personal. Um, so, you know, having talking about this and creating a program specifically for people in this age group, um, interesting. It was a lot of fun because I don't think I would have done this or been able to do this, you know, 15 years ago. Well, yeah, you couldn't. You wouldn't have the... Yeah. experience the understanding, <laughs> to, right? yeah i mean wrong perspective going in yeah here. do you still i mean i still think it has very little to do with the number and the age and still a lot to do with the behaviors or or lack of habits that we had in our early years so like even though we would all consider ourselves healthy 20 30 year olds like we exercise we lifted weights you you know hit your protein intake right. uh, for the most part we probably had relatively good diets. Um, but I think there's a lot of things that we probably did chronically that was not good for us as far as addressing sleep, uh, mm -hmm. mobility, uh, recovery. Um, you know, there was plenty of times when I did, uh, you know, abuse alcohol and, and substances and times where I did binge and overeat or stuff myself to gain weight. So, you know, I, I still would make the argument that, most of it has to do with just behavior, uh, behaviors or poor choices that have accumulated over mm -hmm. time. That's a big that part. Is now affected because I'm old. Like those things, yeah. I don't think I thought were affecting me because at that time in my life, when I'm 25 and I made that decision, your body was so resilient, you bounce back. And I just think that over years and years and years, it's compiled. And now in the forties, I feel all the physiological changes that my body has changed, has happened. And now a lot of the things that I, I ignored or I didn't think were that important have now become very important. Yeah. I think too, and even from my own perspective, but also a lot of the clients I trained, it was a lot of the mentality of, of sprinting. Like we could, we could tackle a lot of this at once uh, and sort of, um, resolve some of these things we knew that were probably weren't benefiting us very often, or we fell off a bit of the training or the nutrition got a little bit out of hand, but you know what, I'll just kind of tackle that before summer or, you know, when I'll try and get everything kind of back in order. And each time you do that, like year after year, it gets harder, harder, more difficult. Yeah. And it just wasn't like a, um, a repeated lifestyle habit of I'm continuously what? making the right decisions, making the right behaviors. It was more of a, I'm going to make up for this uh, when it's beneficial to me. Look, look, okay. In a nutshell, uh, every decade things do change with how your body responds, your hormones, how your body recuperates and adapts. Uh, and there's a reason why people talk about the age of 40, uh, being over the hill, right? That term. <laughs> Cause that's when things, especially if you don't do the right things, that's when you really start to notice. Now I notice with my peers, right? So, uh, you know, I've been, all of us have been working out for years and years and years. And there was a difference between myself and my peers who didn't do those things. I could see a difference. I could feel a difference, but man, we hit, when we hit 30, the difference got bigger. When we hit 40, the difference now looks massive. Like my 40 year old peers that don't do the things that I do, there's such a vast, massive difference between our health and our function, not to mention just how we look, but all the other important stuff. So in a nutshell, here's really what this is. Yes, your body's different uh, when you're 40 and older. Yes. But here's the other part to it. 
there's a lot of stuff you can do yep. that'll counteract a lot of these negative things that you'll notice right around <laughs> that age. And, and we've talked about this uh, on the show many times. Your workout, your diet, your lifestyle, should you should mold it around the context of your life, and that includes your age. In other words, what is going to keep you healthy and fit at 20 is not the same as what's going to keep you healthy and fit when you're 40. And that's not going to be the same as when you're 70 or 80, okay? Now, the the the, the general guidelines are the same. What does that mean? Well, you want to move, right? You don't want to overeat. Uh, you want to make sure you get good sleep and you, you're you adequately hydrated. You don't have nutrient deficiencies. Like that's all generally true. But when you boil it down, uh, there's some big differences in the considerations that you have. And so all of our programs really are designed for, you know, specific avatars. Some are more for beginners, others more for advanced. Some are for power lifters. Um, you know, some are for more for athletes and then you can modify them and individualize them, uh, based off of your goals and how you feel and that stuff. But this is really the first time that we've really tackled the age thing. Like what are the, what are the considerations that we generally see with people that are 40 years old and older? Um, one of them are, and we'll start with, we'll, let's talk about some of these, right? One of them is hormones. If you take a, a, a man or woman who, who lives a regular life and you test their hormones, uh, their testosterone, estrogen, progesterone, their thyroid, their growth hormone, their cortisol. If you were to look at them at 20 and then you looked at them again at 40, all things being equal, you'll see differences. You will see some differences. Women tend to have a larger change right around that time, but men do as well. I know man's testosterone levels uh, start to decline especially if they don't do anything to offset it. Now, here's the good news is that when when you modify your lifestyle, your diet, and your exercise, you can maintain, I mean, near youthful levels of hormones uh, through your lifestyle. But if you don't, right, if you don't use the tools at your disposal, then your hormone levels start to change quite a bit. Now, what does this feel like? Well, it feels like uh, here's a big one that people notice as they low get older. Energy. Well, okay, we'll get to the obvious ones because you named one low energy, obviously. But here's an interesting one. How about the way you store body fat? Okay, oh. if you're listening or watching uh, this podcast, you may notice this, that when I gain 10 pounds now versus 15 years ago, it doesn't seem to go to the same places. If you're a woman, you may notice more belly fat, whereas before it used to go to your hips and thighs. If you're a man... You may notice more body fat in your upper body, up in your chest area, in your neck area. What's that? You know, when I used to gain body fat when I was a guy, you know, younger, it was kind of just in my belly. Now I'm gaining it in kind of these, these different areas. Well, that we know through studies is related to changes in hormones. That's a very unique and interesting one. Now, you mentioned, of course, energy levels. That's a big one. Libido. Libido is another massive one. You can have a very youthful libido, but oftentimes people in this age group notice they don't. And and it's a it, now there's a lot of things that go into libido, <coughs> or uh, worse, sometimes they think uh, they're normal or there's nothing wrong because they've been that way for decades now. Right. I mean, more often than not, when I have trained somebody that's over forty. And I ask questions around their libido or drive or their testosterone level. And if they haven't tested, many times they'll be like, oh, I'm, I'm fine. Yeah. I'm good. And then we go and we get their, their testing done and they're like in the floor. And then we get it corrected and they go, oh, my God, I feel amazing. They just didn't know. Well, what's that old, what's that old saying? Uh, you, like you put a boil, you, 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 you drop a frog in a pot of boiling water, it'll jump right out. But if you put it in, the, in, in warm or cool water and slowly boil it, it'll die. It won't yeah. jump out because it took time to get to that point. Yeah. What you're talking about, Adam, is not this drastic, because you would know, right? If you went from like youthful hormone levels one day, and then in two days you went to this like really bad yeah. like hormone problem, you know, you'd be like, oh my God, something's wrong with me. You go to the doctor. But if it's like a gradual 
like a little Slow worse, a little change. worse, a little and, worse. Yeah, and you're throwing band-aids on top of it. A little more coffee in the morning. <clears throat> you know, okay, here's some sedatives at night. Oh, I need an anti-anxiety medication. Oh, here to throw an SSRI on top of that. Here, let's do this thing. Let's do that thing. Not realizing uh, that your hormones went from where they what are called opt considered optimal to terrible because it was this step approach that probably started right around your early to mid thirties. And you didn't start to like really notice until you get to your mid forties and like, oh, something's off. Oh man. And it's, it's funny because sleep is, is one of those things hormone wise that, you know, if you're getting really good sleep, your, your ability to, to, you know, keep things somewhat balanced is so much greater than when you get older, you notice when you don't get good sleep, you, you don't just bounce back. Like th these are things that like, um, my entire day, sometimes my week is affected by like mm. a couple nights of, of poor sleep or it becomes your new default. It becomes, I only get four hours of sleep just because my body just wants to get up. And then now I'm just making yep. this a routine. Uh, and so it just kind of, it's one of those things that gets away from you. And then now, you know, trying to correct it makes it even you know, crazier. There's a silver lining in that point. Um, and probably the part that I think excited me the the most about putting together uh, this program because we, we attacked lifestyle and it was first time ever, like an age group um, is that all those things that you now notice or the, the negative things that you notice as you've gotten older, the silver lining in that is when you make these adjustments, right? When you actually decide to put together a sleep routine, when you finally decide to do things to optimize your hormone levels, when you start tweaking these things, you actually really feel it dramatically where I, dramatically where I felt like in my twenties, if you messed with some of these, you turn some of these knobs, I would give you the like, eh, yeah, maybe kind yeah. of feel it. We're with clients now that are over 40. If I get someone to dial in their hormones or dial in their sleep, you know, dial in some of these things. Holy crap. Well, did you know? Yeah. So, so this, you know, I'll bring up an interesting study I read years ago on this. Now, this is within healthy ranges that I'm referring to, okay? So <coughs> if you're outside of this, then this, this might not make a big difference. But for men, what they found with healthy men, so healthy active men, you healthy active men will have testosterone levels that are he healthy, right? So the hormones reflect your health typically. So if they're healthy, testosterone levels are, are going to be pretty good. But what they found when they compared like men in their 20s to men in their 30s, 40s, and 50s, was even though they were healthy, there still was a little bit of a difference in testosterone. It was still a little less as the, as the men got older. Not a lot less, but a little less. Here's what they found, though. That the healthy, active, older men had higher, had um, a, a more concentrated amount of androgen receptors. They had better androgen receptor density, okay? So for people who don't know what that means, the androgen receptors are what testosterone attached to. Okay. The more receptors you have, the more active or powerful, whatever amount of testosterone you have is. So as men get older, if they're healthy and they do the right things, even if testosterone does start to decline a little bit, your androgen receptor density gets better. You know what that means? That means your, your, it doesn't matter that your testosterone went down a little bit. In fact, there's other studies that show that Within a, within a healthy, optimal range, right? So we're not talking about extremes here, so I want to be clear. Within a, you know, within a range that's considered healthy and yet somewhat optimal, it was not the testosterone levels that dictated how much muscle the men built. It was the androgen receptors, how dense they were. Mm -hmm. So this is a silver lining if you're a man listening right now in that if we can, you know, and we'll talk about some of the stuff that, uh, that we put together, but as you start to work with your body and get your hormones to look more youthful, right, or to get to those youthful profiles, you'll probably respond better than if you were in your 20s and you were doing some of this stuff. Mm -hmm. um, now, I don't know of any studies on women in this particular case, but I would surmise that there's a, that it's, it's similar. Women also have androgen receptors. Believe it or not, a lot of people don't you know, think that testosterone is the male hormone. Testosterone is extremely important for women as well, just as important as it is for men. The difference is the ratios. When a woman has low testosterone, she has the same side effects or effects uh, that a man will. So I would surmise that it would be something very similar. And, and also, just, just to kind of point in this direction, when you look at 
uh, top level strength sports like uh, powerlifting, and you look at the records that people set in their 20s, 30s, and 40s, many world records are set when people are in their late 30s, early 40s. Okay. So these are world records. Okay. So, so what's my point with what I'm saying is that the, that although age does play a role, if you know how to change your lifestyle and work out and diet accordingly, then it's not going to play a huge role. It plays a huge role because your lifestyle hasn't changed, even though your age has changed. So what does that look like? Right? So think about this, right? You take your, your, your 28 year old, uh, versus let's say your 45 year old. So we'll have an age gap there. Typically who has more responsibilities, right? Um, the 45 year old is going to have more responsibilities. You're probably dealing with kids, a career. Yeah. Fully in your career. You got way more to lose. Like, uh, like all of us, you know, the three of us are all entrepreneurs. Okay. We all have, uh, you know, wives and children now. Um, changing your business and starting a new business, it's a lot scarier now than it was before you had kids and you were younger. Nobody's dependent. So you've got that um, on top of you. You're also, your time is spread out a little bit differently uh, because of those responsibilities. Like I got things to do that have nothing to do with like what I want to do just for me. <laughs> I got to do things for other people. I got to do things for my kids. I got to do things for my business. I have responsibilities. I do things for my wife. So I don't just have the time to just go waste um, in the gym, which when you're in your, you know, when you're a kid, you kind of do, you go do a lot of stuff in the gym. I could go spend two and a half hours. It doesn't matter what I'm doing in there. Um, you know, most people over 40, just even if they wanted to, they couldn't, even if we put together the perfect workout, that was two and a half hours long. They'd laugh because they'd be like, well, who's got two and a half hours. Right, right. So, so that's another big, uh, challenge that we need to, um, you have to tackle. And then another one, um, is joint issues. Now there's this myth out there that your joints just go bad as you get older. Um, like that doesn't, you, you don't start to notice age related joint issues that have specifically to do with your age until you're much older. Typically what it is after 40 and 50 in forties and fifties is that if you've been moving in ways that are suboptimally, you've just been doing it for longer. So if you're 25 and you've been running, not great, or you've been squatting, not the best, or you've been sitting down for a long time. You, and you're 45, you've just been doing it for 20 more years. Now it's going to start to show up. And so the workout has to consider that. You can't just throw the same workout at somebody who's 45 and 25 without considering that. You know, the, the silver lining in this, again, is uh, forcing you to make better choices around your exercise selection, yeah. the amount of time that you spend on the working out. Uh, the intensity level that you 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 train at, uh, it has to be balanced with stress. So all these things that I think initially when you when you start to age, you start thinking as like these are all these negative things. These are all yeah. this, oh my joints now, or oh I only have this much time, or oh I've got all this other stress. But really, what it ends up doing is it, it forces you to really nail down what is ideal for me and how does that complement the rest of my life, which ultimately leads you to this like better way of living anyways. Yeah, you can be um, more efficient and more effective with everything you do. It just takes more intention. Yes. And I think that's the biggest takeaway I've found about like, the, you know, getting older is just like, again, yeah, you have more responsibility. You have less time to just really burn. And so I want to only uh, stick with things that are actually going to move things forward for me the most. And, and two, along with age comes wisdom. And so you go through a lot of that process. Hopefully you get to a point where you realize, okay, this really works well with my body. And this is what I need to stick with and, and, and create that consistency that's why this is my favorite part about being 40 plus and and going through all this and figuring this out is like i've cut out all the fat yeah. i've cut out all the other i mean i used to spend yeah two hours plus in the gym yeah. and i wasn't in what else were you gonna do? i wasn't yeah. in better shape <laughs> than what i am today like i was literally spinning my wheels most of the time yep. and a lot of stuff was over training and overdoing stuff mm -hmm. and way more than i need to or doing a lot of things that were way less effective than other things or neglecting the stuff that was going to move the needle more with my overall health where 
now have pieced that together where it's like, man, the, the stuff that I do in the gym now is way less, but elicits a lot more results for me and complements my life. And I think that's the silver lining in all of this stuff that, oh, these are all these challenges that we have as we get older, but really all it's done is, is, is forced me to focus on, okay, what are the, what are the big rocks that in my lifestyle and in my training and in my new nutrition that I need to hone in on. And I feel like that's probably the, the funnest part about putting this all together was piecing that together on the same way that we would with, with a client. You know? Well, obviously, um, you know, we'll start with workout. Um, you know, we talk about that all the time on the show. Now, you know, all exercises have value. Okay. Some are more valuable for some things and others more valuable for other things, but ultimately, uh, the, the best exercise for you is going to be the one that you can perform with the best technique and the best form that allows you to accomplish the goal that you're trying to accomplish. With that in mind, you have to consider when, you, when I'm training somebody or working with somebody that's over 40, I have to consider certain things. Uh, a couple things that are quite common are core stability, um, hip movement, and mobility, shoulder mobility, and then knee and ankle type stuff. But knee being the big one. I said ankle because oftentimes it comes from the ankles, but they don't typically complain about their ankles. They typically will complain about their knees. Now, person comes to me, he's like, I want to build muscle burn body fat. And I, if I consider those things, there's a selection of exercises that I can choose from that are going to be more effective. Mm -hmm. Okay. Period. End of story. Because they're more appropriate. There's just there's just going to be exercises that are going to be more effective when you consider those things. I'll use a silly example, um, but this is a tool that I used as a trainer, which I used more of as a trainer, that I personally discovered the value of by using it on myself. Just one silly example, which is a sled. A sled, a, it, it, the, the rate of injury uh, and how it moves the joints is so much friendlier than any other lower body exercise that would be in the same category of muscle building, strength building, and fat burning. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of safe, you know, there's a lot of, I don't want to say safe because all exercises are safe if you do them right. But there's a lot of lower risk, lower body exercises. But the trade-off is always this. It's mm -hmm. not going to build muscle as much. It's not going to be as effective for right. fat burning. But hey- you know, your hip bothers you. You won't hurt your back. So why don't you do this one? The sled is interesting because the sled is a high performance producing, if you do it right and you program it right, uh, a tool that's up there with like the barbell squat, barbell lunges, Bulgarian squat, that kind of stuff. It's up there. But it it's also, it's one of the few exercises or I should say tools that's simultaneously in the same category as safe, uh, correctional type exercises. Okay. It's, it's rare to find by anybody who's a very if, rare. If you're a trainer or coach, strength coach, you know, this, you got your categories of exercises. If you tell a strength train, a coach and you say, uh, pick, give me the top four lower body muscle building, power building, fat burning exercises. And also pick me the top four correctional exercise, safest, lowest risk of injury and pain exercises, none of them are going to match except for the ones you could do with the sled. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's what's so rare about it. But there are other movements like that for the rest of the body. And there are ways that you can program them. So when creating a workout for someone who's over 40, this is a very strong consideration. What exercises are we going to use that kind of fit both categories? Because yeah. what I hate is this. this is what I hate. I hate this. I hate... And I won't settle for, none of us will. We will not settle for trading results. Like, okay, you're going to get less results, but you know, you're older, so you have to do this thing over here. And I know that's that there's cases where that's true, but the whole point here was, can we do this with both? Can we do both? Can we make this feel good on your body, but also kick ass? Yeah, you still want results? the results. That's right. But, you know, considering some of those other factors of uh, higher risk in terms of, joint impact. And there are exercises that, um, 
you know, will require a bit more of that joint stability and strength. And if, if we're already in a position where we have a um, little bit of joint dysfunction, we're addressing it with mobility practices, we're trying to kind of, you know, reintegrate that and make sure that, you know, all that is in order. Meanwhile, I want to build strength. I want to, you know, keep my muscles uh, built and developed. We can incorporate things like the sled yeah. to accomplish that very uh, effectively. And and also too, it's it's just one of those things that it carries over and translates towards functional activity. Yep. So things around the house, um, being active, being strong, active and energetic uh, in your everyday life is going to benefit uh, your interactions with other people, your family, your your work, all these other things to consider. So it's just, you know, uh, adding all that up and, and, and assessing what has the most value now in terms of uh, efficiency and effectiveness from each exercise is something to consider. I really, I really thought of it like this or think of it like this. Um, you know, when we wrote maps anabolic, maps performance, maps aesthetic, when you add all those up there, it's, it's about nine months worth of programming. So there's still like three months left. If I've got a client that I'm training, um, that's over 40, I feel like this is something that comes in annually every year. Yeah. So every year, and then and say they love those programs, right? anabolic has been great for them. They saw great results, performance. They love that. They love aesthetic. They love training that way. And this is somebody who's over 40. I'm cycling this in as their fourth program. It just, it just makes total sense that we always have this to balance them out and to keep them feeling good forever. I see it like that. Yeah. Well, yeah. look, just to give another example of what I'm talking about. Okay. Uh, you, you've, you, if you listen to the show for longer than a week, you've heard us talk about the value of the barbell squat. Phenomenal exercise. One of the best movements you can do. One of the best muscle builders. If you perform it right, it's going to improve the health of every joint that's involved, which is pretty much most of the body. It's extremely functional. There's a lot of carryover. It's just, they call it the king of all exercises for a reason, but it is a high skill exercise in comparison to others. I mean, you have to have good mobility, good control, good stability, because if you don't do it right, then it can become something that can cause pain and injury. Okay, so you could take a barbell <laughs> squat and you could change one little thing about it that pretty much doesn't take away any of the results you get from the squat, but does dramatically reduce the potential risk that comes from the squat when your form isn't just right. And that is to eliminate the, the need to change directions as you're doing the squat itself. In other words, when you're put, let's say you put hundred pounds on your back and you're squatting down, when you change directions to come back up in a split second, you're actually squatting more than hundred pounds. There's uh, momentum is involved. Okay. And that's typically when people cause problems, either chronic issues or acute issues, chronic in the sense that over time, they're like, Oh, my knee bothers me or whatever, or acutely like, yeah, I got to the bottom, tried to come up strain and I got hurt. Well, a box squat. A box squat is literally a squat that gets rid of that changing directions because you sit down and come back up. There is no, you're squatting 200 pounds. It's 200 pounds the whole time because you sit on the box and then you come up rather. Than, so that's just one simple, very simple example of what I'm talking about. Now there's a lot more that goes into programming a workout like sets and reps and when you do lower reps or when you do higher reps and when you combine them and when you include things that are more plyometric. You might think to yourself, what does plyometrics have to do with uh, working out over 40? I'm going to tell you something right now. If you're over 40 and you're listening right now, and I tell you, if you get up and run as fast as you can, yeah. do you think you're going to hurt yourself and you are a little afraid? Jump off a truck. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah, yeah. You're going to be like, and if, if that makes you kind of like, oh yeah, if I tried to take off right now, or if yeah. I tried to jump off of something like a, like a bench at the gym, I probably hurt myself. It's because you've lost that skill because you stopped practicing it. In this program, we also included ways of redeveloping that skill. Why do you need that skill? Because life is not controlled. So there's going to be a moment where you step off the curb wrong. Your kid's going to need something. You need to grab something real quick. This is when people tend to hurt themselves. But there's a proper way to program that. Now, that's just the workout portion of uh, kind of what we had to put together. The real considerations, though, the ones that were were we really sat down and spent a lot of time was in the lifestyle. This is the first program we've ever created. This is the part I'm most excited about. Yes, this I is the fun part. This is the first program where we give you lifestyle 
programming and we have dietary guidelines and advice as well. It's the first program we've ever done that. So th this yeah. is why this is why I think this will forever become my annual tune-up program. And the way and I'm this is I'm going to do this one right now. So the way that I think I'm going to approach this and you just kind of went over just some some basic concepts in the programming of the training, which I'm excited to do, but I'm more excited about the lifestyle stuff because of all the things like we're going to, we're going to address the, the morning stuff, the evening stuff, the diet, all these things. And really what I'm looking for in all these lifestyle, uh, you know, th th goals that we have or the things that we set as far as like the hacks and stuff is when I apply them, the things that I notice as far as a return and like, where have I been yes. missing big time, right? And so that's why I like it as like this annual reminder because it's not like there's things that I have included in here that we've never talked about before or I've never done before. But the question is like, oh, like how consistent have I been with that? And if mm -hmm. I am applying those things, you know, which one's giving me the biggest return? And so I love the idea of this program being this annual tune-up on the exercise side and then also like an annual check-in yeah. with myself on the lifestyle side. So I think of like exercise tune-up, lifestyle check-in is like the way I, I'm looking at the way I'm going to approach this. Right, because if you can ritualize this, like what a benefit uh, that's going to provide you with everything else you're you're pursuing, especially physically. And um, two, to get on track uh, uh, with your diet and to get on track with your sleep and all these other factors that we know move the needle so much in terms of overall recovery. So you try any of these other programs too. I love that as like a, a sort of a, a check-in to see where we're at and where we can improve. Well, here, here are the main considerations with the uh, lifestyle guidelines that we um, included uh, in this program. So number one, uh, we looked at what are things, well, here are the, some of the problems we need to deal with. Uh, one, insulin resistance starts to become an issue right around now. This is when your body isn't responding to the same amounts of insulin as it used to. And this is a big problem, okay? Insulin resistance um, is connected to, I don't think you can find a chronic health issue that doesn't have this as a component or as a root cause. I mean, uh, dementia, Alzheimer's uh, is due to insulin resistance, heart disease, uh, cancers, low energy, like uh, you know, dis you know, mitochondrial dif dysfunction, right? These are the what they would refer to as the powerhouses of the cell. So we looked at, okay, how do we, we want to improve insulin sensitivity. Obviously the workout does a lot of that. Strength training, one of the best things you could do. But what are the other things that we could do that improve insulin sensitivity. Here's the, the second one, cortisol. Uh-oh, everybody hears cortisol. They think that's a terrible hormone, a stress hormone. Get rid of it. No, no, no. Cortisol is an essential hormone in the body. If you had no cortisol, you'd be terribly unhealthy. Would not be a good thing. Okay, so everybody talks about crushing cortisol, lowering cortisol. Mm -hmm. That's actually not accurate. What, what really needs to happen is you need to have appropriate cortisol levels in the morning yeah, and, timing of and it. in the evening. This is the way cortisol is supposed to look. You wake up and cortisol goes up. Cortisol produces energy, wakes you up a little bit, gets it moving. Then it starts to taper off and come down in the evening. That's when you're starting to relax and rest and then you want to go to sleep. What happens when people's cortisol levels are all kind of all over the place is they either A, get this inverted cortisol pattern where cortisol doesn't want to go up in the morning. So give me big coffee to kind of give me this artificial energy. Then because of their body's inability to deal with stress because they're not in good health, because they don't exercise right, or they don't eat right or have good sleep or lots of other reasons, the cortisol starts to respond later in the day. And then they find themselves, how many times have you heard this from a, a client uh, like this that we're talking about? We're like, I have no energy all day long. And then when it's time to go to bed, I can't sleep. Yeah. It's like I'm exhausted at lunchtime. We have a meeting at work. I can barely keep my eyes open. I think to myself, I can't wait to go to bed tonight. Go home, deal with the kids, do the thing, put the kids down, try to go to sleep. Why am I tossing and turning? Yeah. What the hell is going on? Mm -hmm. So that inverted cortisol uh, ratio is what a lot of people are, are dealing with. Or you get this cortisol level that's kind of high all the time. By the way, there's you could 
start to develop a resistance to most hormones, cortisol being one of them, meaning your body stops responding to it. And so your body needs to make more and more cortisol. So now you're in kind of this higher state of stress. High cortisol levels that are inappropriately high all the time have been connected to things like visceral body fat in the gut. So you may notice like, oh, I'm storing more body fat. Like I gained 10 pounds. I've gained 10 pounds before, but why is it all in my belly now? What the hell? I never had a belly before. Could be connected to something like that. We're also looking at optimizing the hormones, testosterone, estrogen, and progesterone, and having them be youthful and appropriate. And then the final one is growth hormone. Growth hormone is the youth hormone. Uh, you'll see, you'll hear about celebrities taking human growth hormone to make themselves feel younger and all that kind of stuff. So that was one consideration. The second consideration was what are things that people can do to make their bodies more resilient to stress? Because you're going to be more stressed out when you're older just because you have more responsibilities, okay? If you're 45 years old and you don't have any responsibilities, go find another podcast because you need some help. But most most of us in our, like, at that point, you've got some big responsibilities and that's a good thing. But what are the things you could do in your lifestyle to help you deal with those things. And then here's the third consideration uh, with the uh, with the lifestyle guidelines and programming. Uh, is it going to give you a big bang for your buck and is it something people can do, right? So if I read a study that said, um, you know, you have to swim in salt water at 3 a.m. for 15 <laughs> minutes and then, like, I'm not going to advertise. I'm not, I, I, yeah. I, who's going to do that? No one's going to do that. Who's going to follow that and for right. how long? So what we did is we picked the ones that gave you the most bang for your buck the ones that help regulate cortisol, the ones that help your body adapt to stress. By the way, that means you're going to build more muscle, burn more body fat, because those are both adaptations. And the ones that are doable, the ones that are doable, that where you're going to look at these and you're not going to say to yourself like, oh, that's great. Now you just added 15 more chores to yeah, my yeah. day that I'm not going to be able to, to apply. And then what we did is we put it together in a way to where the goal is not to be perfect. Nobody's perfect. The goal is to simply move through the phases and get a little better each time. That's what's pretty awesome about the way we set it up. Well, my recommendation would be to actually print off the checklist, right? So there's morning, evening, lifestyle hack, and there's like check boxes that I know that we've created within the program. Right. So, because I'm so glad you said that, Adam, because there are things you can do in the morning to help optimize hormone levels that you want in the morning. Uh, and also optimize how you feel because you're about to get your day started. Then there are different things that you do in the evening to help uh, bring cortisol down, to help mm -hmm. with insulin sensitivity, and then help growth hormone come up uh, when you go to sleep because that's when you want the growth hormone to come up. So yeah. there's morning things and evening things. And then we have general health guidelines uh, that we included. But then we also included dietary guidelines, which we never don't, we usually typically don't touch, but we wanted to include these in here because, uh, you know, you're, you're, you're probably a, a wiser consumer at this point. And so I said, Hey, let's throw in some dietary guidelines. Cause we think this will give them, um, a lot of what they're looking at. We also threw in some supplement guidelines. I don't think, have we ever added supplement <laughs> no, guidelines? No, no. Yeah. I, I feel like this is like for you too. I feel like you've you've attracted so many other supplement nuts that, know, <laughs> that want to know what you're taking, why yeah. you take it. And it's like, okay, well, let's look at all the common things that people are deficient in, especially things that are more common as we age. Uh, what are some basic recommendations around that and things that, that we would, and again, back to your point of, it's not like we threw the whole gamut of every supplement out there. It was like, what are the ones that are the common offenders? What are the ones that are going to move the needle the most? And which ones would you recommend in that order? And that's what made it to the made it hundred hundred percent. Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah, no, and the um, the actual uh, lifestyle like checklist. I mean, we're just trying to like find those things that we know. You stack these dominoes together, it's going to get you closer to those natural rhythms, and it's about getting your body sort of back in sync uh, with with sort of that optimal setup so we do have that bit of a spike in the morning and then we sort of are able to to calm down and it, it's it doesn't just happen is is the point of all of this is like you just have to be a little bit more intentional um you know as we we go forward uh in age and this is just one of those things that just helps you to um, really be intentional with your everyday behaviors. And if you could just do one of them consistently, that's a win. And yeah. then that now we build off I'll, of that. I'll give a couple examples. Um, I'll give you more than a couple examples. One we've talked about before, but I like to bring this up because this makes a big difference. This makes a very big difference 
and your health, your hormones, your how your body responds to exercise, stuff like that. And we've talked about this b- before, but this is one of the things that we recommend uh, that you do both in the morning and at night, and that is to go to bed and wake up at the same time every single day. Go to bed, wake up, same time every day. And the reason for this is because we've talked about this before on the show. When you go to bed later on a Friday night, feeling like you're going to sleep in Saturday, and you do that again Saturday night, by the time Monday comes around, it's time to go to work, you've given yourself jet lag. Mm-hmm. Okay. You've actually changed your circadian rhythm by two or three hours, and it takes about two days to readjust. So now Monday sucks, Tuesday, eh, and then Wednesday, you're back to normal. Now you think to yourself, like, well, I could deal with it, drink a little more coffee or whatever. Look at the data on messing your up your circadian rhythm, even by two or three hours on health. Profound impacts. So it's very, it's it sounds silly, but the reason why we put that one in there is because of the impact that that will have on all the things that we've been talking about. Fat loss, muscle gain, energy, libido. Go to bed, wake up at the same time. All right, here's one that's unique for the morning. Uh, and we put on here just kind of some guidelines that kind of walk you through, but you you will be using cold water in the morning as part of your shower. Okay, now why, why would you do that in the morning? What's the big deal with that? Well, we talked about cortisol. We want your cortisol to learn to be higher in the morning. Well, it's going to help raise that and give you some of that energy. It's also going to help your body or make your body produce more of what are known as catecholamines, epinephrine, norepinephrine. These are energy producing chemicals. Why do you want to do that in the morning? Because unless you're going to wake up and go back to bed, you got stuff to do. This is when you want those things. You don't want those before you go to bed. All right. What about when you go to bed. Well, here's two things that we included in there. There's a lot of things, by the way, that we included in there, but here's two that maybe not so obvious that when you look at the data actually have some pretty profound effects uh, on all the stuff that we talked about. One of them is to box breathe before or when you're in bed. Box breathing. Now, what does that do? Hmm. That kicks your parasympathetic into gear because you're without realizing, especially if you live in this state, uh, you might not realize that your body is in this sympathetic central nervous system state. So sympathetic, fight, fight or flight, parasympathetic, rest and digest. Box breathing, especially when you when you schedule it, program it, and do it the way that we explain it, kicks in the parasympathetic. Now, why do you want that? Well, you get better sleep. Okay, that's good. I sleep better. But what else does it do? You make more growth hormone. If, you, if you're in a stressed sl- state and you go to sleep, even if you force yourself to sleep in a stressed state, you take an Ambien or you take a Benzo or you drink or something to make yourself go to sleep or you're so exhausted, you knock yourself out. You're not producing the same amount of growth hormone or melatonin. Well, doing this before you go to bed will have a a, a positive impact on those things. Another thing, again, this sounds silly, but when you look at the data and that's what we did, this was a simple thing that has a big impact is to write down a few things that you're grateful for. Oh, that sounds so woo and silly or whatever. No, it has an impact on a person's Huge consistency. For mindset. Yes, on their consistency in their workouts. Again, on the how the rest and digest part happens while they sleep. Those are those are just a few, but there's a lot in there that we've listed that you can work through and build upon, along with the program to work out, along with the dietary guidelines. And again, it's all specifically for. And I, like I said, I, well, I actually didn't say this on air. I said this before we started recording the most personal program that we've ever created because it's like, you know, I'm, I'm in there. I'm in the right. mid 40 now. So it's <laughs> yeah. like, I didn't just turn 40. I got, this is all, all the good stuff. I'm in there. Yeah. So this is all the stuff that I've pieced together uh, that I used to do with my clients, but that I really see the value in because I do them uh, with myself. By the way, this program we're launching right now. And because we're just launching it, uh, it's going to be on sale. So it's discounted. We're going to take $80 off the price, okay? So it's MAPS 40 plus. So maps 40 plus.com. Use the code 40LAUNCH. So that's 40LAUNCH. And you'll get $80 off. And there's going to be some free stuff that we include with that uh, as well. Uh, that offer will expire Sunday, December 24th. Also, if you like the show, head over to mindpumpfree.com and check out some of our free guides. We have free guides that can help you with many fitness goals. You can also find all of us on social media. Justin can be found on Instagram at mindpumpjustin. You can find me at mindpumpdestefano and Adam at mindpumpadam. 